Hey there Storm fans, Branch Cook here and today we're playing Gruel Breach and Modern. Many of you have been asking why I haven't been uploading this deck and do I still like it? Yes, in fact I think that it is the best Storm deck in Modern. That said, pretty low bar, I don't think Storm is actually that good in the moment. So the reason why is that we don't actually have good mana in this format, at least the ritual variety. So the best thing that we have is probably Strike It Rich. And then after that, we have Pyretic Ritual and Desperate Ritual. So two mana to make three mana. Meanwhile, the control decks have a Force of Will that's been printed. Fury exists, Endurance, Grief. Like there's just other powerful things that are allowed in this format. And for some reason, Wizards of the Coast has decided that Storm is just not allowed to be viable. They've banned Seething Song, Rite of Flame, Preordain. There's a whole bunch of things that have been removed from the format. And it's gotten to the point where Storm is pretty much unplayable. That said, I do think that Gruel Breach is the best version of that you can play. My list hasn't actually changed since the last time that I recorded this video. I did record a video about two months ago. You can find that video on the card above where I played somebody else's version of my own deck. So they had changed cards. This is my 75. It's been posted on my Mox Sealed for some time now, and we're gonna play it today. So hopefully you enjoy it. If you have any thoughts, comments, questions, suggestions, whatever, put those down below. But I mean, I've gone over long deck decks in the past. I am not playing Reckless Impulse or Ren's Resolve. I do like Galvanic Relay. I think that you just want the most powerful card that you can possibly play, and it allows you to beat blue decks. Yes, those Reckless Impulse effects allow you to keep comboing on the combo turn, but in my experience, Galvanic Relay is really the card that you want to be playing. Some people play both, but they don't play Lightning Bolt or the third copy of Grape Shot. That's something you can do. However, this deck cannot beat dedicated graveyard hate so dothy voidwalker that sort of thing and dothy voidwalker is a main deck card so lightning bolt really helps out there it's also pretty good against hammer time so that's why i'm playing these card choices if you have any questions as i mentioned put those down below but also go check out older videos they're probably answered in that and it helps support the channel so win-win okay so that's what i've got and i'll see you in the first match don't go anywhere if you enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks that's enough for now let's play some magic welcome to the first match we're on the draw and revealing our gigantha our opponent has also revealed a gigantha gigantha battles okay so this hand seems reasonable we don't have a dread uh not a dread horde a dragon's rage channeler but i think we're going to keep it anyway we're just going to play out back to back goblins and hope that one of them lives monastery swiss spear so blitz Okay, they're getting in. We'll fall to 18. Draw for turn. Or they'll bobble me. One of the two. We draw Strike It Rich. It's not the worst. Let's go search out a mountain. If I didn't draw a one drop here, I was just going to play the Stomping Ground tapped. We'll pass. They draw off their bobble. And now they go to 16. Sprite Dragon, so they're attacking for 2, I'll go to 15. Going to 13 does put me in lethal range next turn. This deck is very explosive. Okay, we'll fetch. Ouch, go to 12. Play a Goblin. Red, Manamorphose. We'll make Red Red. Play a Bobble. Let's look at their top card. Another Swiss Spear. Play Underworld Breach. Manamorphose. I guess we'll leave the strike at rich. Or is it better to leave the bobble? It might be better to leave the bobble. Okay. We'll do red. We'll do red red. Okay. Rewarded. We had a strike. So Storm is... I'm one damage short of killing them here. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. Okay, so I'm going to target them. 
And I'm going to try to trick them a little bit here because I'm going to only put minimum damage on their creatures. So now if they respond with like immunogenic growth and they didn't. Okay. Sacrifice this for red and we'll grape shot again. So now they're taking eight down to six. And I might have misclicked on my grape shots on that first one because I could have put them to one and then minus three. Yeah. I think I might have misclicked on a couple of them because their life total should be lower if I didn't misclick. That's on me. Another Swiss Spear and two Bolt. Sure. They have two cards in hand. Our game plan now at this point is probably Gigantha. I'm at 10. Channeler. Okay. We have Sorcery Enchantment Creature. I'm a little nervous about what to do here. Play the channeler. I think I'm going to go to eight and shock myself here, which is a little bit risky. And then cast the Desperate Ritual, get the Surveil trigger. We'll keep this. And now that gives us Delirium. We'll put the Gigantha to hand. Pass the turn. You could have tried to sneak the Delirium on your opponent, but then you don't end up with Gigantha in hand. And I think that's ultimately the end goal here. They're swinging in. I mean, we're going to block. Okay. They are now at three. They also have a, a big Jags. So they're one mana short of casting theirs. We're drawing the ritual. We're going to be one mana short of casting it this turn. So if you cast Pyrotic Ritual the hard way, it's four mana. If you cast it post an Archimancer, you have three mana. Either way, you're just short. We have two Grape Shots and two Lightning Bolts left in our deck that would win the game. They have land five, but this puts them to one. Okay, they don't want to do that. They could have cast Gigantha there and chose not to. Sure. They target themselves, which is the correct move, because if they draw a Burn Spell here, they can attack and say, hey, I don't think that you're going to kill me on the Crackback. And they don't have a Burn Spell on top. That's what this play says. They'll draw a card off the bobble. We draw a channeler. Ritual. Actually, I messed up. I should have played the channeler first. I was thinking that I had exact mana, and that's not true. I had uh, one extra, so I should have gotten the surveil off this ritual. I could swing here. I would get crushed by another copy of mutagenic growth. But that means that next turn they're not trading with my gigantha. I think that's okay. Do you have a trick? No tricks, only treats, sure. Let's hope that the lack of surveil on my part ends up not mattering here. Also, people all the time are like, Bryant, why you play Gigantha, you're never casting that card. Game number one. It happens all the time. Our opponent going to a single life here. Oh, why was I concerned with Munigenic Growth when they were at two life? Am I just dead to breach here? I think I am. They have 11 cards. Yeah, I'm dead to the Breach. Lightning Bolt, three times, I'm dead. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. What? Did they not look at my life total? This is why you don't concede. Great year. Okay. They just had lethal, chose not to kill me. Yep, sure. You got it. Okay, we'll draw. So then next turn, they can play their own Gigantha, which is unfortunate. I'm going to hold the land back. And now they'll play their 5-5. Five five. Yep. We have a bunch of cards that win the game. Let's draw one. Like that. Hiya! This game was very messy. Both sides uh, made small errors. But we're not going to focus on that. We're just going to try to win these post-board games. We definitely want the extra copies of Lightning Bolt. I've tried boarding in Veil somewhere in the past. They're a deck that sometimes has a couple copies of Spell Pierce. I think boarding in Veil actually just like dilutes you too much. Uh, that's my two cents. And I haven't experienced a lot of people having permanent hate, so I don't really like to sage you. You could try Aria Flame for their graveyard hate, but once again, I think that this is just a race. So you want bolts to slow them down, and you're just going to shave a couple copies of Galvanic Relay. Reveal our big elk. And wow, what a hand. They say the perfect hand doesn't exist, but I think I just drew it. Soul Scar Mage. 
Draw for turn, Strike Rich. Nope. Okay. Uh, so we could try here to not give them a Lightning Bolt target, and then they tap out and we try to win. Or I am super likely to win if we just play Channeler and then pass and hope that the Channeler lives. So that's going to be my game plan here because it's a turn two. Please don't kill my Channeler. Come on, just play a dragon. No blocks. And they're passing. I don't think I'm supposed to try to turn two here. We'll swing one. Fetch. Ouch. Just play the goblin and pass. They're likely going to kill the goblin and maybe tap out on turn three. We'll see. No. Okay. Maybe they want the prowess trigger on their turn. Two mana. For a sprite dragon. Okay. They're swinging one. So this is a strong read for like a spell pierce or a fluster storm. Draw. Strike a rich. We'll cast that. Get that surveil trigger. So most of the time, even if it's a good card, you want to put it to the graveyard just so that way you have a little bit more escape fuel. Desperate ritual. Even if they have spell pierce here, we can manamorphose and pay. It's a fluster. We can still win. We don't actually need this ritual. Okay, we've auto yielded to a bunch of abilities, and now we're going to turn three through a fluster storm. And this is sort of why I don't think that Gift Storm is very good. It, like, Gift Storm requires so much to do something that's pretty easily disruptable. And here, we're just going to casually win through that Fluster Storm. Red, red. Underworld Breach. That can go to the graveyard. Manamorphose. Pay the red. Escape. We'll keep the ritual. And the opponent concedes. Just like that, we're 1-0. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by theepicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Round number two, we're on the play and we've opened up a hand that technically has lands and spells, but I think it's a mulligan. Okay, this hand's pretty decent. We will bottom the Abundant Harvest and you might be wondering why not get rid of the Mishra's Bobble instead? Well, with the Bobble, you get a pseudo scry with your fetch land. And the Abundant Harvest is purely random, outside of possibly drawing one of your other 13 lands. We'll play the Arid Mesa and Mishra's Bobble. Pass the turn. Flooded Strand. Look at our top card. It's a Desperate Ritual. I don't think we need that, so I'll fetch. Stomping around. Draw off the Bobble. That's a good one. I think I want to wait for our opponent to not have open mana before I deploy this in Archimancer. Steam Vents, okay. Consider. Two open mana and pass, okay. Another Abundant Harvest will cast this. We'll say non-land into a bolt. Pass. They play a Ragavan while holding open Counterspell mana. A Bobble. Okay, they have five cards in hand. I like the channeler here. We'll play that. They use a bobble. And then they fetch to shuffle that card away. They'll draw. And you might be wondering why I'm waiting to Lightning Bolt. Well, Ragavan has dash. So if they happen to have another copy of Ragavan in their hand, it's a little sticky. But also, by holding this Lightning Bolt, I can potentially try to create a window where if I bolt their Ragavan they might counterspell or it, i could bolt another creature they swing i mean it just gives me more opportunity so i have artifact land and sorcery so i'm going to go to blocks a block and then before damage let's bolt them 
And now this will end up giving me delirium. Okay, so if I wait, if I did this before blocks, I could get punished here because my opponent would have counterspell mana up. Now they don't. So this is a potential window for us. We'll bend the grape shot. We have to worry about spell peers. Land. Another breach. Okay. Well, it's now or never. Goblin. Manamorphose. Red, red. Land is good. Are you going to respond to my fetch? Looks like they are. They're at 10. Unholy heat. I will respond with this Manamorphose. So that's going to give me four mana, which is enough to Underworld Breach plus two drop. But I'm really hoping to draw another Ritual off this Manamorphose because it would make this game very easy. Boom! There we go! All right, I think that we've just won this. Grab the stomping ground. I'm sorry, I realized that I probably spiked my mic there. But what a draw. So now we just have Bolt Grape Shot and our opponent is done. Send them packing. They see the writing on the wall. They concede. Love it. Get out of here, Merc Tide. Okay, so in my experience, Aria Flame has been really good in this matchup. Same thing with Veil of Summer. And I actually take a pretty different route than most people in this matchup. Our opponent stack is full of removal. Unholy Heat, Lightning Bolt, stuff like that. What if we just make those cards not matter? So I brought out all of my creatures. And I just kind of bored into a grind plan. So I like Lightning Bolts. I like all this stuff. So I get it. it it's not it's like you're a grindy deck now. And a lot of people don't like that. But this is what I've had the most success doing. I've also tried boarding in Beseju, um, because sometimes they, it, it's fine, like it's not amazing, but um, sometimes they have permanent hate. If they do, you can board it in. For now, I'm going to choose to just board out one copy of Abundant Harvest instead. Reveal our Gigantha, and game number two. Yeah, this seems fine. Keep Steam Vents. Come on, Lightning Bolt. Draw. Underworld Breach. I'm not going to complain about that, but it doesn't really do a whole lot for us at this moment. Grab a basic. Play the strike. Pass the turn. They get in for two. We'll go to 17. They get a trigger. Galvanic Relay. That would have been a good one for us. They bobble themselves, and I imagine they're about to play a fetch land. No, they consider. They play the land. They're at 16. Okay. They'll draw off their bobble. I'm going to auto yield to that trigger and then we'll get the draw. There's the bolt. I'm going to choose the shock here because if they try to counterspell the lightning bolt, I can veil of summer. Also, I do not like these treasure tokens. Uh, not one bit. They should bring back the, uh, the treasure chest. It's much better. All right, let's attempt a lightning bolt. They use another bobble. Atawara. Okay. Ooh, okay. A little annoying. We do have Aria Flame in our deck. That would be a very good draw for us. I will play Stomping Ground. And I'm just going to flashback Strike It Rich. Pass the turn. Dash Dragavan. So they did have another. Unfortunate. So we'll go to 11 here. They hit a Bloodstained Mire. So they did me a little bit of a favor. They have three open mana. We'll strike again. I was trying to build up my mana so that way I don't lose to spell peers. I was supposed to bobble in their upkeep. I feel a little bit foolish now. Oh, so I was thinking when I passed the turn, I was like, oh, what if I bobble myself and see a card I want? So I guess maybe that's the line we take here. If I see a card I really want, I could metamorphose into it, but I think we'll let them have Abundant Harvest here. They play it. And they reveal Expressive Iteration. And they're casting it now. Okay. They play a land. So they have Counterspell mana open. I wonder if this is a spot where we could try to play Breach. Aria. Okay, that was very good for us. I'm at 9 life. Let's fetch first. I, I'm, I'm less concerned about the Breach now. They play Consider. Sure. Aria Flame. Am I supposed to just pay here? I could Veil, but it's one less card. Okay, I'm just going to pay. Aria triggers. 
We'll cast Desper Ritual. If they don't respond, I'm going to flash back Strike It Rich. And I will flash back the Strike. We get a trigger off Aria. And then I'm going to Veil of Summer. We just want to maximize damage off this. So this Veil of Summer was a Lightning Bolt that draws a card. Beautiful. And now we pass the turn. We know that our opponent has a, a Ragavan in hand that represents two damage. Merktide. Yep, there it is, 7-7. Seven, seven. So they have lethal next turn with the known Ragavan. We have to beat a counterspell this turn. One open mana. Galvanic Relay, a little bit awkward. Manamorphose. This will deal them four. Spell Snare. I'm going to respond. If I could draw a Veil of Summer here, it'd be huge. We'll do red green. That's not good enough. Uh, so the Grape Shot being cast would deal them four. Then Grapeshot itself would be for four, so I could put them to, or for six. I could put them to one. Oh no, am I really one damage short here? I'm one damage short. So I'm going to deal one to the Ragavan. And then the rest of them. I have to hope that they don't have a single point of damage somewhere. They have five cards in hand. No whammies, please. And they just had Lightning Bolt. Okay. Unfortunate. We were just shy of winning this game. What was our next card? Veil of Summer. Ah. Oh. Okay, so we needed that first Veil to resolve. I think I'm actually fine with our current configuration. I don't think we need to board. Or change our board. Reveal our Gigantha. Let's try to get this third game. Keep. This is turn two Aria Flame, assuming that they tap out on the first turn. Ouch. We'll say land. Pass. Included Delta, they fetch. I think what we want to see here is a cantrip or channeler. Mm, it's the monkey. Okay. We're going to take the opportunity to resolve the Aria, but this is their best start. Auto yield. Draw. Relay. Kind of a clunky card when we're trying to do the Aria plan. Okay. Our key spell has resolved. They bobble us. And they hit a ritual. Okay. They play Channeler. They have four cards in hand. Oh, they have Petty Theft! Oh, that's so brutal! Oh, wow. That's actually just backbreaking. Uh, that was a nuts draw because now we can Grape Shot their team. Okay. They have land three, they're at 25. And another Ragavan. And another channeler. They have two cards. Hmm. Am I supposed to respect spell pierce here? We'll fetch down to 14. I think we're supposed to try the Aria again. They have two cards. And they had exactly spell pierce. Okay, so we've seen Fluster Storm and Spell Snare, so I was choosing to not play around this. Uh, but they have one card now. It looks like they milled the Spire Bluff with the Channeler. So now they're attacking for five. We'll go to nine. And then end step the Brazen Borrower would put me to one. They play a land. So they have one card in hand. Harvest. So saying land here is tricky because, like I mentioned, um, they could have lethal. But I think it's probably the move. We'll go to seven. Desperate Ritual. Unreal Breach Floating One. Your last card is Counterspell. <laughs> uh, I think they got us. Unless I top deck another Breach. I don't know what's more dangerous here, the Ragavan or the Channeler. I don't think there's a real huge difference here. I'm going to go after the Channeler. Because if they draw a Cantrip, they get the Sculpt. And I think that's more impactful than a random card off the top of my deck. And now they'll cast the Brazen Borrower. Uh, they drew Expressive Iteration. That was a very good draw for them. I mean, I'm probably dead anyway. Like, my odds of drawing one of the other Breaches is pretty low. I'm at two. And I'm dead to my own Grape Shot. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, we got smushed. We were one damage shy in game two, and that ended up being the match, unfortunately. What our top card? 
was a ritual. Okay, well we're one and one. Still plenty of magic left to be played. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our Patreon to get articles seven days early, on top of other sweet benefits, and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. Match three, we're on the draw. I'm going to keep it, but this hand's a little bit sketchy. So we need land number two. But if we draw land two, this hand is very explosive. I'd also take a... Looks like they're on Tron as well. Okay. So that means my creatures are likely to live. Not a land. A little bit of a bummer there. Okay, grab our stomping ground. Ouch. Please give me land two. They use Chromatic Star for a green. There's his tower. And then Sylvan Scrying. Yep, they'll have turn three Tron. Draw step was Lightning Bolt. Pretty bad for us. Attack and pass. We were not rewarded. It's worth noting the Reckless Impulse effects would also be bad here. Uh, Galvanic Relay obviously looking a little bit clunky so far this league. Or in the Great Creator. I believe that we've lost. Even if I hit land 2, we're probably not beating Trinisphere. Yep. We'll call it. So, I mean, that was a bummer of a game. Alright, Blood Moon comes in. Besaju. We don't want Lightning Bolt. Get that out of here. So they're a Relic of Progenitus deck, so I do like Aria in the matchup. And I am not super crazy about Relay, just because Relay is usually good when you're synergizing with Breach. Brought out a couple copies of Abundant Harvest, because we boarded in the Besages. Alright, try this out. You're also boarding in a lot of cards that cost 3, so boarding out Relay sort of makes sense as well. Okay, let's come back. That was a, an ugly loss. That said, we were just never going to beat that Trinisphere. Okay, we have a Blood Moon and lands? What? Keep. I'm going to start off by not playing the Strike It Rich. We can leave that back a little bit. So I'll play the Channeler. Pass. Hers is mine. Map. Sure. I think I want to play a Goblin this turn. Swing better, better. Swing. Okay. Next turn, they have Guaranteed Tron. We did not draw land three. Play the Blood Moon. Surveil. I think I'm actually going to keep this on top, which might seem a little bit odd. But if they happen to have one answer, I want the second one to close the door. Get in there. And because they killed our channeler, I can play the Bobble now and not have to worry about uh, milling away the Blood Moon on top. They had the basic in hand, okay. Sylvan Scrying versus Tower. What to do? It's worth noting they didn't go get Besaju. I don't know if Tron plays Besaju. I could probably look that up. Yeah, there's two Besajus in that deck, so I think we're supposed to just play another Blood Moon here. Just make sure that they don't get free. Swing. They have Tower. Aren the great creator. They find Trinisphere, another goblin. Play Channeler. Strike a rich. We'll bin that. Okay. Attack the Karn. They kill my treasure. Oblivion Stone. Yikes. That's probably gonna do us in here. We'll send three at them, two at the Karn. We just have to pass. Now they can use the map for another tower, and then next turn they can blow up the board, play Trinisphere. We are done. Double Blood Moon was not good enough. Yep. And now the Trinisphere. We do have two copies of Besaju, but I don't think that we're going to be able to beat this. And I'm going to choose to play the Channeler. So you might be saying, why not play the Goblin? It reduces the cost of Trinisphere. That's not actually how it works. No matter what you do, the spell will always cost at least three. And second copy of Karn. They minus, they have a potential of nine mana. Currently eight floating. Sundering Titan. I'm good to call it. We got destroyed. We're now one and two.
If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Let's try it again. Okay, so we're on the draw. I do think that this hand is a keep. Galvanic Relay is our action spell here. We have Double Channeler. And our opponent might be on Affinity. Possible 8 cast. Let's fetch to Thin. We'll go to 17. Even if you don't care about Thinning, hypothetically, it's always best to just fetch first anyway in your Underworld Breach deck. There's a Saga, so this is likely 8 cast. Patchwork Automaton. You got it. Bolt. This has Ward 2, so we cannot bolt their creature. Abundant Harvest. We do get double Surveil here. Uh, I mean, I, I, I do want this, but I think... Oh, uh, jeez. I'll keep it, I guess. Non-land. We'll pass. Really wish that that wasn't the top card. We need more mana. Saga moves up to two counters. Dark Steel Citadel. Memnite. The Automaton is growing. Metallic Rebuke Mana is open here. Another Grape Shot. Let's strike it, Rich. Bin the Lightning Bolt. Think we want the land. Land Sorcery Instant. Maybe I was supposed to bin the land. I don't know. Yeah, I think I was actually supposed to bin the land there. We'll bolt them. Now we'll have Delirium. I should have surveilled the stomping ground previously. And then we'll attack. They'll make a large construct. And then on their turn, I imagine they're going to make another construct and then search out like a spell bomb or a soul guide lantern, something along those lines. You're not going to make another construct? Okay. There's a saga. Thought monitor. Okay. Cranial plating. Am I just dead? I think I am. The relic didn't even matter. Mega dead. 21 damage coming in. Ouch. Okay, so this is like a hybrid affinity 8-cast list. We definitely want the Besages. I don't think that this is a relay matchup, so those can get bored out. In fact, this hasn't been a very good relay league. It's really better against like the real blue decks of the format. Um, the, the control decks, the Yorian decks, the Omnath decks, those sort of things. It's okay against Murktide. Unfortunately, the games we played, it didn't really shine, but it is fine there, I promise you. Uh, and we don't really, I mean, Bolt's fine, I guess. I was thinking about boarding in Blood Moon, but maybe I'm supposed to just, like, I mean, we had Bolts there and they were awkward. All right, I think I'm going to do one Bolt, three Blood Moon. Hit Submit. Actually, I'm changing my mind. I want the Bolts. If we're boarding out Relay, we need a way of beating Graveyard Hate, and... The classic, like, bolt you, grape shot you line works. Where when you don't have the bolts in the deck, that's a little bit tougher. So without relay, I think we want some sort of way to beat those graveyard hate cards. Game two. Reveal our elk. The sand's very good. Keep. We want, like, a manamorphose and a channeler. Those would be the two cards I'd ask for. Like, if I could bottom the goblin and the grape shot, it would be for those two. Play the turn. We'll fetch. Relay is also pretty good against Rakdos for what it's worth, only because it's another thing that doesn't use the graveyard that you can, you know, churn cards into. Non-land. Pass. Ooh, Channeler. All right, so they play Dark Seal into Springleaf Drum. Another Channeler. Well, we can play Double Channeler this turn, or we can play the Goblin and Archimancer. I'm going to choose to play the Archimancer, because if we draw a Ritual, I can try to win next turn. If I play double channeler here, that's pretty unlikely still. That's annoying. Okay, so we'll fetch. Let's play another goblin. And then the Dragon's Rage channeler. We'll get in. I am the beatdown. The Patchwork Automaton. And do Tormod's Crypt. Okay. Play channeler. And bobble. It will cost one. We do get to double surveil off it. Mill the breach. We don't need that. We don't need the land either. 
Bobble them. We are now delirious. Thought cast. They crypt me. We'll swing for five. Pass the turn. Thought cast happens. They play a saga. Ornithopter. They choose not to attack. Another channeler. Play that. Underworld Breach. Get triple surveil. One to the graveyard. Two to the graveyard. Three to the graveyard. So we have creature sorcery. Okay, we'll mill the land. Another sorcery. Instant. A beautiful. And then two at the ornithopter. They're going to stub one, that's fine. Get in for six in the air. So this means that no matter what, I have lethal in the air next turn, unless somehow they get another flying blocker. The opponent plays Glimmer Void into Aether Spellbomb. This will buy them at least one turn by bouncing a channeler. Or will it? Okay, so let's move to combat. We'll swing out. They have to bounce a channeler here. A Galvanic Blast 1. Sure. Bolt you. We have one game number two. Resubmit. What a hand for game number three. I will gladly keep this. Let's go. I like that my ankle cracked so loudly that it made my noise gate pick up. That's how you know you're getting old. Alright, Basic Island into Springleaf Drum. Rituals of Fine Draw here. Yes, I'd like to pay two life. Strike a rich. Pass the turn. There's a saga. They cycle Sojourner's Companion. This goes and gets an artifact land. They grab Darkseal Citadel. So I have a turn here to do whatever I want, and we pick up another copy of Grape Shot. So I could try to Goblin Ritual Breach, but I don't think that's actually like a great line. Instead, I'm just going to play the goblin and pass the turn. Doing everything in their main phase here. They have the galvanic blast for the goblin. Yep. Draw. Hmm. So we know that they're about to go get a relic. They've already shown us a relic. They're at 20 life. Storm count is 1. So I could go ritual breach floating 1. Ritual again, which is four storm. And then I don't have anything in the graveyard. I think I'm going to pass. And they do get a relic again. Exile the harvest. I don't know. It is not looking good for the home team. That is for sure. Another copy of Springleaf Drum. Okay. They're attacking for seven. So they have lethal. I have to do something. Fetch on their end step. Grab another stomping ground. Drew a land. Play the breach. Let's see if they use the relic. They're resolved. Desperate ritual. Storm 2. They use the relic, and I think we're just dead here. So I can double grape shot, but it's not really meaningful. Okay, we got smushed again. We're 1 and 3. I'm beginning to remember why I switched to Living End. All right, so let's just try to finish the last match and get 50 play points. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Let's get it over with. The fifth and final round. We're on the play. Reveal our Gigantha. I really do think that Wizards should probably do something like... <sighs> Storm decks in this format are just struggling. We'll keep this. This is actually a pretty good relay hand. And a bunch of you can choose to look at this deck and be like, well, relay's not good enough. Like, relay's one of the few good parts of this deck, in my opinion. It's like relay and breach. But th the problem is that the mana in this format is just so bad. Give us Rite of Flame. Come on. Eldrazi Tron. <laughs> oh, I can't win. This is not a good matchup for us. We'll fetch. 
Ouch. Metamorphose. Red green. I meant to make green there. It didn't work. Red green again. Striker rich. Striker rich. Relay for five. Pass the turn. So even if our opponent has a thought, uh, not seer here, we're okay because we have double reach. And there it is. I think we have everything we need to win. This was actually a perfect Gale Vanag relay. All rolled up. Land. Play Ritual. Again. Pyretic Ritual. Pyretic Ritual. Manamorphose. Red Green. Underworld Breach. Storm is five. I think we're supposed to just build towards triple Grape Shot. All right, so that's five mana. Actually, I can't triple Grape Shot, or can I? So we would escape down to six. Cast it, double escape. That works. Right? I'm not messing this up. I have six cards. You could cast this two more times. Yeah. Okay. Now we Grape Shot. It was a sweet one. Not that there's anything wrong with playing Eldrazi Tron, other than the fact that you're someone that enjoys prison, which means there's probably something wrong with you. But this isn't a deck that interacts on the stack at all. So like, what I'm trying to say here is like Endurance, Force Negation, like any of the top decks probably beat this draw. But we got a little bit lucky here and we squeaked one out. Take out the bolts. I've had some luck with Aria Flame against them and Blood Moon, so I think we can try both of those. We'll shave on relays down to... Actually, let's just board those out. And then we'll get rid of the Harvests. Reveal our Elk. Sure, why not? Point it with a Mulligan to five. There's this Tower and a Relic. Yep. I think I'm going to play both Bobbles. Next turn, we'll just play the Goblin. Hers is mine. Look at your top card. Look at my top card. That's a good one. Okay, so we'll draw a few cards here. Ugin the Spirit Dragon. I don't see you casting that this game. All right, so I have to make a sacrifice here. Our, my deck list doesn't play Basic Forest, and that's intentional. My list with the Infect Creatures does. But here I have to decide that I'm not going to play the goblin the entire game because I'm going to blood moon my opponent. We do have striker rich and um manamorphose so that I can use these cards. But basic force just like isn't very good in this deck, so that's why we don't play it. Like it casts exactly goblin and abundant harvest and then you board those you board out abundant harvest a bunch. So like it's just very awkward. All right, time for the elk to enter the arena. And often when you're blood mooning people, Gigantha is the plan. Ooh, they had the waste. Incoming thought not. That was a very good, uh, I don't know if it was their draw step or not, but huge play. They took the goblin? Really? Okay. I could play the Aria. I'm going to choose to play Gigantha instead. I'm a little confused why they didn't take the Gigantha. There must be a reason, like they're going to try to race me with Reality Smasher or something. Another Thought Knot. Okay. Goodbye, Arya. Remove Bobble. Manamorphose. I think I'm going to sit on this one. Land number five. Reality Smasher. Uh-oh. We'll take five. I go to 14. Not looking good. Another Aria. I don't think it's going to be enough, though. Our opponent goes to 30. You can respond to the Aria and deal your opponent lethal. Well, you can respond to the game life trigger and try to deal your opponent lethal damage. We don't have enough resources for that. So I'm going to hide these two cards in my hand in hopes that I can, you know, deal a bunch of damage next turn. So I can block a Thought Knot and get an extra card here and take nine down to five. Okay, another ritual. Walking Blister for two. They kill my big Gigantha. Okay, exile Gigantha. 
So we need to hit a, a lot of runners this turn to deal 30 damage. A lot. We'll start by splicing this Desperate Ritual. Save targets, I'll let you. Desperate Ritual, this will deal two. Manamorphose, and we'll do green, green. So this deals three, they're at 24. Another Manamorphose? Goblin. That's not good enough. Abundant Harvest. We would have to hit all runners at this point. Non-land. So you're saying there's a chance. Play the Goblin. Manamorphose deals five. Green, green. Not good enough. Unfortunate. Okay. Game three. Resubmit. Yes, I'd like to be on the play. I don't think that this hand is actually good enough. It's just too redundant and it stumbles on mana. We'll go to six. Sure. Actually, I'm going to get... Whoa, oh, cancel. I'm going to get rid of the Besaju. Our opponent has kept six cards. Fetch. Mountain into Channeler. Pass the turn. Power Plant. Map. Bobble's a good one here. Yes, I'd like to pay two life. Channeler. Bobble. So you could Ritual first here to try to guarantee Delirium, but I'd rather not waste all my resources, and I actually hit Delirium anyway. They're drawing a Saga. Be down. Draw off the Bobble. Another Ritual. So Underworld Breach is likely lethal on our turn. Here's his Tower. So we actually get quite a few looks at Underworld Breach as well, so I'm going to go for it. We'll fetch. Heretic Ritual. There it is. Manamorphos. Put it on top. So yes, we lose a number of surveils here. That doesn't really matter. As long as we find the breach, we're doing well. Desperate Ritual. Mill. To the graveyard. Breach. They use their map. They're telling us they have nothing. Once again, to the bin. Sweet. Manamorphose. That can go to the graveyard as well. Red green. Strike a rich. More surveils. At this point, we're just digging for grape shot. Manamorphose. Another underworld breach. Surveil at the foothills. Red red. I mean, I could play the goblin. Sure, let's do it. Manamorphose again. Storm nine. I'm coming for you, Grape Shot. I promise. Don't give up on me. There you are. My sweet little Grape Shot. Storm 10. Red Red. We'll play Blood Moon. Insult Injury. Okay. And then Grape Shot. Okay. We have successfully gone 2 and 3. Yes. Woo. All right. So... It's tough to say changes I would recommend because I think the real issue is the core of the format. There's not a whole lot you can do to improve this archetype. I do like Galvanic Relay, but let's decide that maybe you think Relay is a cyborg card, which I think is fair. Um, but how do you make this deck better? You make it faster. I think that's really the only way how. So Reckless Impulse, I don't think is actually a card that meaningfully makes the deck faster. If you had some sort of like one mana way to fill the graveyard so like there's technically like insolent neonate but i don't think that card is amazing you could play haggle which is essentially the same thing really this deck wants faithless looting but that card isn't legal so we're not allowed to play that um it's i don't know we really just need right of flame because right of flame would make galvanic relay into a powerhouse sort of card instead of like a dirtle mid-game value engine so that's my two cents uh, thanks for watching. It's still the best Storm deck in the format, but as I said in the intro, low bar. I do think it's better than Gift Storm. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great day. Keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring.
don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.